Hello boys and girls, we're back again at Trinity and today we have a story about two people who decided to run away. Now hopefully none of you have ever thought about running away and I hope none of you ever run away. But sometimes we just feel like running away when we're sad, when we're troubled, when something's happened that has made us very upset. And that's what happened today. There were two people who left the city of Jerusalem and they were headed out of town toward Emmaus, a city called Emmaus, actually more like a little town. And they were very sad. They were walking along and talking to each other about what had happened. But you know what happened? Jesus came. Yes, Jesus came and he caught up with them, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said, so what you talking about? And they said, well, haven't you heard the sad things that have happened? And Jesus said, no, tell me about it. And they told him all about the sad thing that had happened. That Jesus had been put to death on the cross. And they said there was a rumor that Jesus was alive, but they hadn't seen him. And so they said, we'd hoped that maybe this was going to be the time that everything was going to be okay. But now... We just don't know what to think. It was getting late, and they were getting ready to stop at a town called Emmaus and spend the night. And so they invited Jesus to come and stay with them. And Jesus came in with them, and they took off their coats, and they sat down, and they were getting ready to have dinner, getting ready to eat together. And Jesus took a piece of bread. You know what this is, boys and girls? This is called the host. This is the big piece of bread that the priest uses on Sunday mornings when we're together. And Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And in that moment, they knew that Jesus was with them. And you know what? They were so excited, they didn't even stop to spend the night. They got up right away and they rushed back to Jerusalem and they found the disciples and they said, Jesus has risen and we have known him in the breaking of the bread. So when you see the priest hold up the bread and say the gifts of God for the people of God, know that this shows us Jesus has been broken for us. He understands how we feel when we're sad and when we want to run away. But he has said, I will be with you. I am the food of the journey of life. Thank you, boys and girls, and we'll see you next time.
the old hymn, Abide With Me? I used to sing it at Vespers, evening prayers at summer camp. I have wonderful memories of the sound of young girls' voices and sunsets over Lake Michigan. It made me feel safe and holy. Our story today begins with another sunset. Two people are on the road leaving Jerusalem and headed out to a town west called Emmaus. They were getting out of Dodge. They were running away. Everything had gone wrong. Their hopes had been dashed. They were let down. They were dazed. They were confused. And the sun on the horizon is in their eyes. The sunset is blinding their vision. They're joined by a stranger who asks why they are downcast. And when they tell him, he replies in a way that's mystifying. He explains why things had to happen the way that they did. But it's still getting darker and the two folks make ready to stop. They invite the guests to join them. The King James Bible says to abide with them. The New Revised Standard says to stay with them. But the Greek word in the original New Testament is meno, to remain, to continue with them. Stay with us. It is evening and the day is almost over, and he does stay. And in a simple moment over supper, they see that it is Jesus. Stay with us. Remain with us abide with us. This plea actually begins with Jesus. In the Gospel of John, there's a repetition of the same word, abide, stay. Do you remember what Jesus said about the vine and the branches? Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's the same word, abide, continue, stay with, remain. There's always a great question about this account in the Bible, and that's why didn't they recognize Jesus? But I thought it's a bit like seeing a child or a friend after a long time, and you haven't seen them for a while. Grandparents will say, my, how they have grown, how they've changed, or maybe like a child coming home from college or from overseas, or maybe coming back from a war zone. They are the same, but they are also different. They have a life separate from you. They've seen things. They've made decisions and forged relationships apart from you. It took the act of a communal meal for them to recognize Jesus, even though he seemed familiar before, yet different. In these 40 days after Easter, the day of the resurrection, we recall the post-resurrection life of Jesus. These stories we're hearing on Sundays recount the encounters at the tomb, on the road, in Galilee, and finally at the ascension. Jesus is the same, and yet he's also different. Before, Jesus was inviting others to abide with him, and now others are asking Jesus to abide with them. Just like today when we ask, where is God? Where is Jesus? Stay with me. Abide with us. The stranger that is yet familiar, the teacher who is now Lord, the brother who is now Christ, the risen Lord who is now our guest, and yet still inviting us to be his guests. It's not about location. It's not about the right attitude or about our readiness or willingness or holiness or about the right moment. 
There's a little old-fashioned poem that puts it this way, and I want all the mothers watching to listen up, because I really identified with this. Sometimes when everything goes wrong, when days are short and nights are long, when wash day brings so dull a sky that not a single thing will dry, and when the chimney kitchen smokes, and when there's not so strange as folks, when friends deplore my faded youth, and when the baby cuts a tooth, when John, the baby last but one, clings round my skirts till day is done, and fat, good-tempered Jane is glum, and butcher's man forgets to come. Sometimes I say on days like these, I get a sudden gleam of bliss, not on some sunny days of ease he'll come, but on a day like this. The breaking of the bread is not the only communion that we share. Communion today is found in our meals, in our homes. Times of communion with God when we're troubled. Like the old hymn, he walks with me and he talks with me. Times when we call Jesus at the point of exhaustion and discouragement, at the breaking point in a difficult, ongoing situation. Jesus Christ has promised to abide with us, to stay, to remain, to continue. This was the experience of those who first saw the risen Christ, and they recorded it in our Gospels. And it has continued to be the experience of Christians down through the centuries and down to today. Abide with me. Fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, Abide with me. And he does. Amen.